fell into uh, into like a a pit. It was like clay, or he got stuck. Yeah. Um, uh, he fell into a chaymar. Then he stole, and he was saved. Right. And when the people saw that he was saved, when Abram Avinu came over and like looked at him and checked on him, so he was saved by Akadosh Baruch So then, Lamafreya retroactively, they believed that Hashem had also saved him from uh, from the Chibshan Haish, right? So that's what the Medrash says. But as Nitgadel Kivoda Kisei Omel Chushamayim Ba'olam, and therefore, because the people's belief increased in Abram and in Hashem, so therefore, the Kisei the Kisei Machusecha. Uh, the kisei lekim olam ba'ed shevin mishor shevin machusecha right his glory was increased in the world. The apal pi shepal chesed im melech sedom and even though he showed chesed to the king of Sedom, amar kisecha Elohim lashon din he didn't say kisecha uh, Hashem he said kisecha Elohim right which is a lashon din uh, right we were familiar right like Hashem is lashon chesed. Elohim is Lashon Din. So why did he use Lashon Din in this case? Because even though he saved him from the Chaymar, he didn't want him to go on being a king. What's the proof that we have for this? A very, very interesting Gemara in Nidarim that talks about what are the reasons that Abraham Avinu was punished that his descendants should go down into Egypt? And one of the reasons it's brought up the Amorayim is Shene'enash Avram al Shechzir lo Anifashas. It's because he gave the Rehushim back to the Melch Saddam. Right? The Melch Saddam said, you keep, all the, uh, you keep all of the money, all, all the stuff, and you just give me back my people so that I can keep on being a king. And Abraham Avinu said, I'm not going to keep the possessions, you just keep everything. But what he should have said was, I'm, I'm going to keep the people in order that I can be Megayer more people. And because he didn't say that, so then he was punished that his descendants would go down into Egypt and be slaves, right? But we see from this, from the fact that he was punished, that Hashem didn't want the Melech Saddam to have people. And if a Melech doesn't have people, he's not a Melech anymore. This is the next Pasuk. I loved righteousness and I hated, uh, you loved righteousness and you hated uh, uh, evil. And therefore, you're, 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 you have oil, um, God poured oil on you uh, of, your, of your God. Shem and Sassan make up a record, right? Um, uh, uh, oil of joy more than your friend, right? It's a, a little bit of what that, of what that puzzle it could be in English. Um, and, you know, if anyone knows the song, right? So this is the puzzle that it's alluding to. So what is it talking about in the context of Abraham Avinu? Ahav Tzedek? Who is this? The Hainu Malkit Tzedek, right? That afterwards Malkit Tzedek comes to him and he says, Baruch Avram, right? And so Ahav Tzedek, you loved Malkit Tzedek. How do we know he loved him? Because he gave him Meiser. He gave him a tenth of everything that he had. He I gave him a tenth right. of everything he had. Night, Ali. We have, we have another 15 minutes. Whoo! Okay. How do we know that he loved Malkit Tzedek? Because he gave him a tenth of everything that he had. Betis Resha. Right? Yeah, go, go, go. Betis Resha. And he hates evil. Who's this? Melech Sedom. He hates him. I'm going to raise my hand. I'm not going to take even a shoestring, even anything. Right? So that's how we know. He loves Tzedek, Malkit Tzedek, and he hates evil. That's Melech Sedom. Right, even even a shoelace, even a little something. Right, for this reason, right. What are we talking about? We're talking about the kahuna, right? About the institute of the kohen, right? That the kohen is anointed with oil. And so he received the, the kahuna immediately from Malkit Sedek in this moment, right? That his descendants would go on to be Kohanim. And depending on which opinion in the Gemara you follow, either Malkit Sedek gave away the kahuna even for himself, or he gave the kahuna only for his descendants, but not for himself in that moment. But in any case, Avram Avinu received the kahuna in that moment. So that's what we're talking about when we say, Al Kain Meshechecha. Um, uh, right? You receive Shaman Sasan Mechabarecha. Who is Mechabarecha? Malkit Sadik. The Hainu Sham Shin Nidla Mimenu Vezel Shaman Sasan Mechabarecha, Min Chabarecha, Malkit Sadik. More of the Ahalos. Now, this is. What was. Why did he merit to receive it at that moment? What was. I mean, what, you say he, he took the a bar. I think he took a vow. It's not mashman the psukim why it is that he merited. Chazal discuss it. Um, 
But I, I think that, that the, what Rashi says is it's not that he merited to receive it so much as that Malchit Sedek lost it, if I remember correctly, because he said, Baruch Avram, Baruch, uh, right, right, Baruch Hashem. Right? He should have said Baruch Hashem. He should have blessed God first and then Avram. Because he blessed Avram first and then God, so then he lost the kahuna and it was given over to Avram. But as for why Avram in that moment merited it, I, I don't specifically know. There's also, there's other questions to ask because Rashi tells us that Malkit Sedek was Shem and isn't Avram a descendant of Shem, so shouldn't he already have the kahuna? There are lots of questions you can ask on this, but I think the basic explanation is that Malkit Sedek made it, you know, he, he made an error by blessing Avram before God and therefore he lost the kahuna was given to Avram. More of Ahalos, right? Um, myrrh and ahalos is, is some other kind of uh, of fragrance, right? Ketsios, kol bigdotecha, right? You're gonna have very, very fragrant uh, uh, begadim, right? Uh, uh, what's the English word for begadim? Garments, garments, very fragrant garments. Min hechli shein minei simchucha, right? Um, uh, from the uh, uh, like from the heichal of Shane, uh, mini simchucha, right? You're, you're going to be uh, made sameach. Have a lovely evening, Zev. The Amrin and Bemedrash at Ta'amarta im michut. Right, so what is it that this is talking about, this particular pasuk? Because you said im michut, you said with a thread, like if I take even a thread, so much as a thread, right? Say, so I'm not going to take even a thread. Right, because you said you wouldn't take even a thread, so I'm going to give to your descendants the mitzvah of tzitzis. Right? In my case, it's very, very long tzitzis. But you know, in any case, because you didn't take a thread, so then I'm going to give your descendants the mitzvah of tzitzis. Why tzitzis? Because tzitzis is done with threads. Right? Dabarecher, another way you could read this. Im michud zehamishkan. Right? Why would we say that the michud, instead of meriting tzitzis, we merit the mishkan? Why michud does a, why does michud allude to this? Shahayam mitsuyar bitcheles vergamen vetolashani, because um, it was done up with cheles vergamen vetolashani with all of these, um, uh, all of these uh, dyes and whatnot. And, um, and the same way that you, I, I believe, I believe that the implication here is the same way that you dye threads. So too, the dye was done for the Mishkan. So Imichur alludes to the Mishkan. I think that's the svara that's underlying here in this case. Adkan, v'zeu mor ve'alos katsios kol big dosecha. Right? What's big dosecha talking about? The high nutzitzis, right? Because tzitzis are begadim. Dixiv be al kanfi big dayim v'chulei. Right? Like what we say all the time, al kanfi big dayim by yulachem l'tzitzis. We say every every night and every morning with the Shema. Um, right, so that's what we're talking about when we say Moralos Katsios Kol Big Dosecha is talking about the mitzvah of tzitzis because Avraham Avinu raised his hand and he said, "If I take so much as even a thread, right, in michut, and therefore he merited to pass on the mitzvah of tzitzis to his descendants, which would be Big Dosecha uh, with threads." Min hechli shein. So what's this shein that he's talking about? So, he, so the Zerah Shimshan expounds the first part of the Pasuk according to the opinion that says that they merited tzitzis and the second part according to the opinion that it merited mishkan. Why? Min hechli shein v'chule hu ha-mishkan v'achechal shahaya mitsuyer betola shani. Ah, betola shani, that's like shein, right? Min hechli shein, right? From the, uh, the hechli, I think shein is ivory, I believe, right? From the palaces of ivory. So the same way that it was Shane over in that Pasuk, so too it would be Tola Ashani, uh, which was done for the Mishkan. And therefore, that's how we say that you know, when he raised his hand, he said, in Michot, so he merited the Mishkan. Okay, I'm going to do a quick check-in on the time here. We've got another 10 minutes left. Let's try to cover a little bit more ground, and then we're going to skip to the end. It just occurred to me, uh, probably a foot, major footnote. However, it's funny how uh, in Hollywood they know. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God then Malchitzedek wouldn't. What's the question? It's not a question. I'm, I'm just be bewildered by the idea that someone of the Shem standing, someone who had the first yeshiva, Shem and Abed, right, wouldn't know to thank God first. And, uh, and uh, Hollywood does. Yeah. Kal Vechomer by us that we should be all the more careful not to make this I'm just surprised. Mistakes. I mean, is it really believable? You should be sure. Be people, people, people make mistakes. Happen. People make mistakes. Uh, uh, the, our, our, our great leaders were human as us. Also, and, Hollywood is not out in the beam anymore. So that's like the other difference. Like, who are they going to? Who are they going to think? Their producer? Yes. I'm saying their producer, their producer is not Avram Avinu. Mother. And I'm saying, but Avram's huge. Uh -huh. but Avram's huge still. Uh -huh. So you can't, you know. So it's like. Okay. And also, so you know, another. That, uh, another way you could say it is like, was it really such a big mistake, right? 
you blessed Abraham and you blessed Hashem. What's the big deal that you didn't bless Hashem first? But for Malchit Tzedek, huge mistake. For me, not such a, such a big mistake because I'm no Malchit Tzedek. For Malchit Tzedek, huge mistake, right? So that's another way of looking at it. But we should never, ever delude ourselves into thinking that you know, our Abbas were, were perfect Malachim. Hashem doesn't want a world of Malachim. Hashem wants people who, who, will, who have so much that they have potential for good and they have potential for bad. And because they have potential for bad, they're actually able to choose good. Right? That's who he wants the world to be popular. I don't qualify about. what I was saying. What I was saying, I agree, I mean, clearly. But that's the thing. I think that sometimes we judge, not judge, we look at this in a, such a simplified, stupefied way. Because if, oh, he forgot, you know, uh, proven, they saw the reality, I think. Those things, those events were vastly more complicated. And we're just looking at some simplified version of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for us to say, right? It's like, oh, if I'd been there, I would have blessed God first. It's like, well, who are you to say, right? No, no, no. no. I think that's, was that not the point? Was that not the point you were making? You're starting to check into like selling Yosef. And all of a sudden, it's not because they were angry at him, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole thing. And Reuben says, throw him in the pit. Not because in the pit, because it's scorpion, it wouldn't. You know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Stan or Unlesh It's like a whole super deep and super complicated and very, very uh, uh, more profound than we ever thought possible. Yeah. But we'll look at it, you know, in the kindergarten way that, uh, you know, they're racist, they're the beginning, they're the beginning, they're the beginning that, uh, ah, brothers were evil. Like, uh, Again, this is, this is why it's really important to have the Brechazel. Right. Because the the Chamisha Chum Chomish was written so so it was accessible for anybody, but that's B'derech Pshat, right? And and ain't Hafinami, right? It's it's important to have Pshuta Shal Shal Mikra, but in order to get the real essence, the the Emes, the rest of the Pardes, we have to delve deeper. We have to go deeper. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that is where beautiful. Let's cover a little bit more ground. Benos Melachim BeYikrosecha, right? So this pasuk, let's see. Benos melechem biyikrosecha, right? The children of kings are your dear ones. Nitzva shegali imincha, and the queens that you're right, bechetem ofir, with a with a with like a like a beautiful gold ofir, like a I don't know, some kind of adornment. Yeah. So what does this mean? Sha'amruzal, because we have a gemara in Baba Metzia al pasuk vayas Avram mishte gadol when Isaac was weaned, Avram made a big feast. Right, uh, so, uh, yeah, they made a big feast. Why did they invite the Gedolei Ador of that time? Because like the Gedolei Ador of that time were murmuring. What were they murmuring? Says, uh, says the Gemara in Baba Metzia. Like, oh, you know, this old couple that can't have kids, they go to the marketplace and they find this abandoned baby and then they bring it home and they claim it to be their own and then they throw a big feast that he was weaned as if to convince us that this is really their kid when we know it's impossible. So Avram and Sarah said, you know, all right, let's prove it to you. And so they invited them all to a big feast um, uh, and their women with them. And they brought their children, they brought their, their, their babies and they didn't bring their, their, um, uh, their, like, their nursemaids, right? Like uh, you know, in those days, and you know, so, so sometimes in our times, um, the mothers themselves wouldn't nurse the babies. They would have these women that would do that. Right? There'd be a nursemaid for the baby. But they didn't bring their nursemaids. Why? As if to kind of like taunt Sarah. It's like we all know that you don't have milk because you didn't make this baby and you're very old. So like we're not going to bring our nursemaids. You nurse our kids, right? Ah, uh, but she proved them wrong to them. But she nursed all of them. And then they believed that Yitzchak was really Sarah's son because now she nursed all of them. And furthermore, the Gemara actually says, like, not only did she nurse other children, but her breasts were like flowing fountains. Like she was producing so much milk, it was crazy. And so it was really, really obvious at that point that Sarah had been birthed to Yitzchak. This is in the Gemara. It's yeah, in Baba Metzia. Yeah, it's, in, it's in the Gemara. It's, this is Gamze Kadosh. Gamze Torah. Amar Shebao bin Nos Melachim. Right? They, they, all of a sudden, they held her in a new esteem, right? All of these esteemed people. This is Sarah. Sarah is the queen in this case that they held her in great esteem. By the way, Zer Shimshon only brings this idea that then they knew that Sarah had really mothered Yitzchak. But they still murmured. They say, ah, how do we know that Abraham is really the father? Because maybe Sarah is the mother, but Abraham is not the father. And at that point, the Kaddish Baruch Hu made a miracle that Yitzchak's face immediately took on the appearance of Abraham Avinu. 
When he was a baby. When he was a baby. <laughs> when he was a baby. And they're on and afterwards. And in those days, we also learn, I think, also from Mecca yeah, Marin. Later on, I remember. Like, yeah, right. So that because everybody was saying, hey, he was like exactly like Abraham. He looked exactly like Abraham. Yeah, People would confuse yeah. them. And in those happened, days, happened signs of old age did. didn't show on the face. Signs of old age didn't show on the face. But when people started confusing Avram Avinu and, and, uh, and Yitzchak, Avram Davin to Hashem, that, that signs of right. old age would show. And at that point, HaKadosh Baruch Hu was mitakin. Um, if he lived to be 187, right, why, was, why are we talking about him being an old man of 100? In other words, like at 40, half the age. I don't think we talk about him being average. old at 40. Maybe we talk about him being old around no, 75. No, no, I'm saying There's if no he really lived to be 187, we live to be about 90 right now, right? I mean, Jews take care of the... So 90, 95, that means that he was uh, what it is, 45, 50 today. So that's not... Uh, call me old, I'll, uh, I'll be surprised. Yeah, I don't know. It's you're a good not, question. I'm not a... Thanks. I'm so, yeah, I'm not so surprised all. right now. It's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Really old. Also, I mean, okay. so, so they ask a question by Sarah. I, I think that they, she was what ninety, right? And uh, they talk about her not being able to yeah. give birth and so forth and so on. Yet, uh, Yocheved birth Moshe when she was one hundred and twenty something, and nobody would be surprised by it. And so she had already had children at that point. Right, so they're not surprised about it. They say, okay, that, that was no, really not an abnormal... Be, you know, for so many years, they didn't have a child, and then they have a child. Yeah, that's, right. That's the, but they the say she was old. Who? But that who, was who not... It was older than Sarah was older. No, Sarah. Yes, it was By your habit, who was way older. Nobody says that. That was a norm. Yeah, I say you time. call that also a miraculous birth, right? Because Baruch was already performing miracles with regards to the birds in that time, uh, that they would happen like in a moment, right? So it's not infeasible to say that it was because it was at that time that they were under lachats, and therefore he did miracles for them. But by by they, Sarai, they, know he performed the miracle of a different Right, way. so based on that, they say there was not the old age, which she was not. It was about her complete inability, biological inability to have children. Right. Just like uh, Avram Avino had a biological inability to have uh, uh, children until they were renamed, and then they were transformed, and so forth and so on. Yeah, so there's a, there's a much, much deeper tour, as you're alluding to, about uh, Avram being a tumtum, and there's, there's, there's a lot going on under the surface uh, over there, what you've opened up. Um, it's very good questions. I, I don't know why we're specifically regarding. could also be that, that you know, as the... Um, as the as the merit of B'nai Yisrael increased while they were in Mitzrayim, it didn't become so uncommon to have uh, children at that time. They also had like 40, 60, whatever the midrash. Right, right. At so so it's it's it. it's hard for me to say. I'm not sure. We're we're gonna go just a little bit further in the psukim. Well, we're gonna finish well, up. Your 60 children. Right. <laughs> so, soon by you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and this is this is the pasuk that actually brought us to this in the first place, right? Pasuk Yud Aleph, Shimi Bat Re Ive Hati Asnek, Veshishi Yamedu Betabi. Right? Uh, listen, daughter, and see, and incline your ear, and forget your people and your father's house. Zeha Pasuk Tamua. This is a really this is the weird pasuk that we were first uh, referring to when we began this whole thing. Shahaya Lulomar Hati Asnek, Vacharka Shimi Uri. First, it should have said, incline your ear and then listen. Once you're already listening, what do you have to tell me to incline my ear? That doesn't make any sense. Right? Right? We have other psukim that do this. That they say, you know, first incline your ear and then listen. Right? Um, right? And it's once you, once you have hatias ozen, so then that's the thing that, that you're seeing, right? But first you have to incline your ear. You can't tell me to listen and then incline, right? I'm going to miss it. Right? When we had the Bain of Azarim in this week's Tarsha, Avram Avinu was 70 years old. That's my first in the Psukim. The, the bris bein of Isarim was actually before Avram Avinu told him lech lecha, even though we have the pusik of lech lecha, before we have the psukim of the bris bein of Isarim. Right? The ain muktam amurcha batora. Right? This is a there's a really clear idea that's brought down in the Gemara and Pesachim. We see, uh, I think, very very early on in the per, in, in the Perushim of the Torah, in the big Perushim, that there's no chronology in the Pesukim of the Torah. That the Torah will skip forward and backwards throughout different events for different reasons. And usually the Mefarshim will try and explain why it is that the Torah is jumping forward at this point and not explaining it in chronology. And there's a reason for that. Right? But as Amar Lo Kalish Baruch 
Ki im asher yetzei mimecha v'chulei. Right, and ki im asher yetzei mimecha. Right, this is the pasuk that's going on the Brisbane Nisarim. That's right. So, right. So, so we have these two instances of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, uh, being with uh, with Avram. Right, and even though the pasuk of Lech Lecha precedes that of the Brisbane Nisarim. We we see that these two instances were actually not uh, not chronological. The Brisbane of Asarim happened before Hakadosh Baruch Hu told Avram Lech, well, at least according to the Zera Shimshon. V'zel shimi bad leod rei dixiv v'yomer habet na hashemayma v'chule. Right uh, the, by the Brisbane of Asarim, Hashem tells Avram like go out, look in the sun, and look in the sky. Right, koyi uh, yezerecha. This will like like the stars in the sky. This will be like your children. V'zel pamachas. This is the first time. Right when we're saying shimi bat rei, when you're saying like go look at the stars, we're saying listen and see the acharkak the hati aznech. Right, and afterwards it says uh, incline your ear. What does this mean? Incline your ear. Right, incline your ear is the instance of lechlecha. So that which we say first is shimi bat rei is going on chronologically. The first one, which was the bris bein Misarim, where he said your your progeny was will be as uh, multiplied as the stars. And the second one is hati aznei, because incline your ears when he's saying lech lecha. It's like listen to me. It's time for you to go. Umishum hachei hevi Rabbi Yitzchak pasuk zeh. For that reason, that's why Rabbi Yitzchak brought us this pasuk all the way back in the beginning of the first medrash we brought. Umash and nedrash alav al pasuk lech lecha. This whole thing about how he was looking about the beer of the lekes, right? Like we talked about way at the beginning. Is because he had told him lech lecha afterwards. So, so that's why Rabbi Yitzchak brought this particular pasuk of Shemi ben Yorei, because once Avraham Avinu was already, you know, he 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 understood that there was Hashem in the world, and he had a bris bein abesar between him and Hashem, and he was telling people about the beer of So after that, Hashem said lech lecha. Um, uh, and then it goes into this whole beautiful idea of like why is it saying lashon bat and and the rest of it. But I just want to quickly finish off this inyan, and then we'll jump to the end. Something that Zerah Shimshon doesn't say, and I didn't see in any of the other Perushim, he brings this explanation for why he brought this Pasuk in the context of Avram Avinu, right? Shim'i bat ra'ive hati aznech. It's because he's saying, oh, because of these two times that Hashem revealed himself to Avram. Shim'i bat ra'i was talking about the Brisbane of Asarim, where he says, go look at the sky and see your progeny. It'll be as multitudes of stars. And hati aznech is lech lecha, is inclined your ear, it's time for you to go. But I think, I think, I think that there's a lower hanging fruit for why this pasuk is connected to Avram Avinu, and it's the end of the pasuk, and he doesn't, he doesn't bring it, right? What's the end of the pasuk? Right? Forget your people and your father's house, which is literally what we see in Lech Lecha, right? Lech Lecha me'artzcha me'latcha me'besavicha. It's right, go away from your land, your people, uh, your land, your birthplace, and your father's house. So I think that that's a far easier way to connect the pasuk. The Zera Shimshon doesn't do that. Maybe other mafarshim do, but I noticed that immediately, and I thought it was a pella that the Zera Shimshon didn't bring it. Um, but anyhow, just a little, little something. Now, quickly, we're going to just finish off here. We're going to skip ahead just to the very, very last uh, few uh, few lines of this. This is uh, Kuf Gimel, if you're working with the uh, with the Menukad. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, on on page Kuf Gimel on the left column. This is the last three paragraphs. It starts Vayelech Abram. Are we all there? We got it. Great. Vayelech Avram Kasher Diber Elav Hashem. Vayelech Ito Lot. Right. So this last section here that they we're sort of just looking at the last three paragraphs, which we can work with out of context, is the Zer Shimshon expounding this pasuk of Lech Lecha according to the brachas that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave of Ram, um, and, uh, and and it goes into a lot of detail and it's very beautiful and, and very uh, very osik uh, b'divrei kabbala, um, and so he expounds that that one of the brachas that Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave to uh, gave to Avram is the bracha of Eretz Yisrael. And so we're going to see a little bit what the bracha of Eretz Yisrael is, and we're going to see how it's relevant to us, and it's the bracha that Zerah Shemshem gives us mefurish in his words. Right? So Hashem, uh, Avram went out like Hashem had told him, and Lot went with him. But Yadua ki Lot who remez hara. Right? The Zohar tells us that Lot is is supposed to be like Meramez, he's the Yetzer hara, Right? He went with Avram, so Avram had a Yetzer hara with him. Right? That's what we say. Um, however, lo hayaholeik hu im lot, 
Rak Lot Holech Imo. The Pasuk says, Vayelech Ito Lot, right? Not that he went with Lot, but rather Lot went with him. So he was in control, right? Al Der Shamu Zal, Sadikim Libam Bershusam, or Shaim Heim Bershus Libam, like we were seeing earlier about how Sadikim, when they, when they, you know, they'll consult their hearts, they'll consult their taivas, but they're not controlled by them, right? Because they say, El Libam, Al, you know, El Lev, Al Lev. But Rashayim say Bilim, because they're steeped in it, they're in control, uh, they're, they're being controlled by their hearts and their tibas and their, and their desires. Vekasa Bashereka to the land that I will show you, Velogila Loha Aritz Miyad. He didn't reveal the land to him right away. Kedeshe Bain Kahu Bain Kah Yechmedena. Right? Uh, because b- between the time that he told him to the land that I will show you, and between the time when he actually showed him the land, right, he wanted to make it dear to him, right? That, that, that when you, you sort of like, say, like, like imagine it's like, hey, I want you to meet me, uh, you know, uh, at, at Shirat David at two o'clock. It's like, oh, why? It's a surprise. Oh, it's like, now you've got my interest, right? But if you were to tell me right away, it's like, I bought you a book. Uh, cool. You bought me a book, but if you tell me it's a surprise, it's like you're kind of like you're you're leading up to this big exciting moment where you hand me this book that I've been dreaming of for years. It's like wow, it's like the you know, uh, it's like the ultimate edition of of the Zara Simpson, right? Uh, you know, this thing that you're very excited about. So so that Hakadosh Baruch Hu doesn't reveal everything at once. Lear Muslo to hint to him Shekol Bnei Yisrael Tzarik Sheyach Medu Osa that all of Bnei Yisrael has to make the land of Israel has to make Eretz Yisrael dear to them and not reveal it immediately, right? And he said, Asher Arake, to the land that I will show you. He didn't have what to put into ways, right? So the land that I'll show you. Uh, like, so where do I go? It's like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. You have to come along with me. And in that way, Abraham Avinu was like sort of excited to see what was going to happen next. So, so too, all of his progeny also have to be excited to see what's going to be. And we know that now we're talking about Eretz Yisrael, right? So that's, that's a chiv on us, that we have to like really like make the land dear to us, especially, especially in this critical ace tzara. We have to really, really be as he was at. We have to make this land so, so dear to us. Maybe we also waited till now to go. Lech lecha. Now go get your land. I don't think that's what the Zerah Shimshin saying because he tell because I, I I hear what you're saying. I don't think that's what he's saying because he says lech lecha and afterwards he says ereka and the time like the the moment where he starts to like make make him excited. About like you know like he starts to be like oh wow what what are you gonna show me is with the word asher ereka which I will show you which happens after those words of lech lecha not before right so so I I don't think it's because he was waiting until that moment of lech lecha although of course uh, you know you could say that the Brisbane Masarim you know was like this moment of like oh wow we're gonna have a relationship now um, and so from then until lech lecha it was like well what's what, what's this going to be like right so so in that way it well, was made I, I dear to like according to like what we're going through right now we thought we were going to go two weeks ago into Gaza right ah we going right away ah so, so you're no, saying like lecha, now you go and what are you good what are we going for to get our land yeah there's a lot to shem your word should be in the slit that our that our mm-hmm. our leaders get their get their get their act together. And ah, oh, mamish, like if they had just gone down Simcha story, it would have been like something straight out of Tanakh. It would have been so cool. Um, uh, who am I to say? But Bezrat Hashem, we should, uh, we should, we should, we should be shluchim for a Kaddish Baruch Hu in all the right ways. It's not enough that they call it a flood right before Noah. Say again. It's not enough for us that they, I mean, for you, whatever. That they call it. That they call it right? their. Uh, yeah, what they call it. Uh, flood. Terrorist flood. attack. Uh, whatever, uh, uh, flood, and it happens right before the Pashmah. That was the name of their, that was the name of yeah. their, uh, the attack. What, the Hamas, yeah. Hamas called it a flood? Yeah. What? Alexa yeah. flood. Whoa. Yeah. That's funky. I didn't know that. <laughs> right? I didn't know that. There's also, there's, there's other things that Smarami is right, Pekot Bikaditi, if anyone's seen that Torah. Um, yes. And also, like, Avram Avinu was born, Avram Avinu was born, in the year 1948, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see the calendar, 1948, and when he fought against the uh, the Arab the the Arab Malach, uh, Malachim, he was 75 years old. So 75 years after 1948 is 2023, which I think is is a pretty cool, nice thing. But let's quickly finish off because we've got we're we're already running 11 minutes over time, and we're like right at the end here, right? Every single person, every single Jew needs to see Eretz Yisrael before he will be admitted to Gan Eden. Right? Eretz Yisrael is called Shar Hashem. So they can Yivovo. They're going to go through the Shar Hashem. That's Eretz Yisrael. Ve'od Asher Ereka. Shebevias Hagoel Kol Adam Yirena. 
when we come to the Geula, every person is going to see it, right? And to the land that I will show you, he's not talking to Avram Avinu, he's talking to every one of us. To the land that I will show you in the Geula, I'm going to show you Eretz Yisrael and me myself. And if you're going to say that all of Nei Yisrael has a chilek in the Olam Abba, but we can't be admitted to Gan Eden unless we've seen Eretz Yisrael, then perforce HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to show us Eretz Yisrael because we know that we have a chilek in the Olam Abba. Right? Nehi Ratzon, Sheyebim Heir Avin Yominu Amen. May it be speedily in our days the Geula should come, each and every one of us should merit to see Eretz Yisrael in all of its full glory. Right? Chazrim Legush Katif, Chazrim Le'aza, we should seize our land back, we should take our, our birthright, our Nachala. Oi. Amen. Amen.